Dark Side of the Catholic Church Part 3 For over a hundred years, Ireland had a dark history of turning fallen women into slaves. Magdalene Laundries, named for the biblical figure Mary Magdalene, had inmates imported from psychiatric institutions, jails, women with special needs, victims of grape and S.A., pregnant teenagers, and flirtatious women. Initially, a majority of women entered the institutions voluntarily and served out multi-year terms in which they learned it a respectable profession. But over time, the institutions became more like prisons. Though the institutions were run by Catholic orders, they were supported by the Irish government, which funneled money toward the system in exchange for laundry services. Nuns ruled the laundries with impunity, sometimes beating inmates and enforcing strict rules of silence. You didn't know when the next beating was going to come, said survivor Mary Smith. Smith was incarcerated in the Sunday's well laundry in Cork after being raped. Nuns told her it was in case she got pregnant. She was forced to cut her hair and change her name. Nuns regularly beat her for minor infractions. Some pregnant women were transferred to homes for unwed mothers, where they bore and temporarily lived with their babies. Babies were usually taken from their mothers and handed over to other families. In one of the most notorious homes, the Bon Secor's mother and baby home in Tuam, scores of babies died. In 2014, remains of at least 796 babies were found in a septic tank in the home's yard. Estimates of the number of women who went through Irish Magdalene laundries vary, and most religious orders have refused to provide archival information for investigators and historians. Then in 1992, the Sisters of Our Lady of Charity decided to sell some of its land. They applied to have 133 bodies moved from unmarked graves on the property, but the remains of 155 people were found. When journalists learned that only 75 death certificates existed, startled community members cried out for more information. Suddenly, women began to testify about their experiences at the institutions and to pressure the Irish government to hold the Catholic Church accountable and to pursue cases with the United Nations for human rights violations. As the Catholic Church remained silent, the Irish government released a report that acknowledged extensive government involvement in the laundries and the deep cruelty of the institutions. In 2013, Ireland's president apologized to the Magdalene women and announced a compensation fund. Due in part to the uproar surrounding the discovery of the mass grave, the last Magdalene laundry finally closed in 1996.